Balance is something we're always trying to achieve when it comes to plants. Balance is referencing the soil, the ecosystem around the plant. But one thing we may not realize is that balance does not mean equal, like we see on some balanced fertilizer containers. This actually may be doing more harm than good, so that's what we're going to talk about here today. Balanced fertilizers, simply put, are when all the numbers are equal. 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12. This is referencing that the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are all in equal amounts. But did you know that plants actually use more nitrogen than they use phosphate or potassium? And did you also know that phosphorus and potassium that are not used by the plant can actually be immobilized in the soil and build up over time? So the first question is, why did we start making balanced fertilizers? And the truth of the matter is that phosphorus and potassium in excess doesn't really harm the plant in a noticeable fashion. It's just little micro tweaks that happen over time that can harm the surrounding environment and then the plant itself. Balanced fertilizers are eventually going to become the way of the dodo bird. The truth is that as people become more in tune with soil science and plant science on a home garden hobbyist level, we will begin to really change our minds about what we're putting into our ground. Balanced fertilizers actually are outlawed in some states. I believe it's 11 states in the US where you're not allowed to use any fertilizer that contains phosphate or phosphorus in it, unless if in a soil sample that it is needed for your garden and lawn. Now the reason for that is because excess phosphate or phosphorus tends to cause eutrophication. If you have a pond or a dugout or any sort of water body nearby, you actually want to limit the amount of phosphorus you're placing in your soil. It will over time cause algae blooms which will harm that overall water ecosystem. Other thing you actually want to consider is for selfish reasons. Excess phosphorus will actually cause iron and zinc deficiencies. Iron and zinc deficiencies can affect your flavor, the color of your flowers, and just overall health of your plants. This issue becomes more prevalent in roots that have a shallow root system. So grasses, cacti, succulents to name a few. The shallow root system means that that plant tends to stay right in the zone where phosphorus and potassium are immobile, meaning when we put the fertilizer on, it kind of stays in situ and doesn't move around in the way that nitrogen does. That means over time it builds up more and more, making that concentration very high in this zone. Phosphorus will also harm acid-loving plants. So this can include azaleas, blueberry, hydrangeas, you name it. If these plants are grown in more alkaline soil, which is very common in the US and Canada just because of the way our soil was farmed, we end up with an overabundance of phosphorus being bioavailable, which ultimately competes directly with zinc and iron uptake. So if you've been using balanced fertilizers, it's very likely that you have an overabundance of both phosphorus and potassium. I will also say that if you're using compost or manures in excess, meaning if you're applying over half an inch to an inch of compost or manure, you're going above that in any way, shape, or form, it is very likely that you have an overabundance of phosphorus and potassium because that actually is one of the main contributors to this excess on a home hobbyist level. So we talked about phosphorus and potassium, but what about that nitrogen? The truth here is that nitrogen overall applied in high doses in one go doesn't tend to work very well. Nitrogen is what we call mobile, meaning it's very easily gassed off or it's very easily leached and moved by water. An over application in the beginning of the season may not necessarily be utilized later in the season if we have a very moist summer. So with that being said, a multi-series action of application is always best. This may mean for some an incorporation in that soil in the spring and then a top dressing of compost manure granular or liquid throughout the growing season. This will provide a continual release of nitrogen which is exactly what your plants need. With that being said if we have too much nitrogen present in those early periods or just throughout the growing season in general we tend to get really rapid green growth. Now you're probably thinking this is a good thing but what ends up happening is the nature tax hits us even harder than what we normally see. Less Luscious green growth is more susceptible to disease, but it's also more susceptible to pests. That luscious green growth is very easy to penetrate 
when it comes to bacteria, fungi, and the creepy crawlies. So with that being said, we want to reduce our nitrogen input and only apply it over time as needed. Now, when it comes to fixing a balanced fertilizer application that's been over applied or a nutrient imbalance that we're starting to see that we want to bring into balance, I always advocate for soil testing. Now, before you say that's too expensive, there's no way of doing that for my garden, just grab a very inexpensive test. Some of those ones off of Amazon will work great. If you're showing an overabundance, the best solution is dilution, meaning stop applying fertilizer and simply grow very heavy feeders in that area. Over time, it will use up that excess nutrients or the excess nutrients, unfortunately, will be leached away into waterways or volatilized into the atmosphere, but it will leave your soil over time. And in the future, when it comes to fertilizing, try to go for a balance. And by balance, I mean five to one to two. Nitrogen being five times higher than that of phosphorus and nitrogen being three units higher than that of potassium. Oddly enough, fish emulsion is pretty much a perfect balanced fertilizer that you can use. But what I will say is it's a little bit low in potassium only in respect to the potential of fruiting and flowering plants. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below what you guys wanna see next and give this video a thumbs up plus tap that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.